In a sit down last night on Fox News, Health Secretary Robert F. Kennedy Jr. attempted to diffuse outrage over his response to a new CDC report on the rising autism rates. It comes after he received some strong criticism from, from medical professionals over these comments. These are kids that this is a preventable disease. We know it's an environmental exposure. These are kids who many of them were fully functional and regressed because of some environmental exposure into autism when they're two years old. And these are kids who will never pay taxes. They'll never hold a job. Kennedy dialed back those comments, saying that he wasn't referring to all people diagnosed with autism, only those who are nonverbal. The CDC study found that the autism rate has risen to 3% of children in the U.S. That is one out of every 31 kids. Scientists have said that the data indicating a rise is likely due to improved screening and access to autism services. For more insight on this, we went to Susan Ketching. She's a family nurse practitioner based in Cary with over 30 years of experience. Family nurse practitioner Susan Ketchings joining us now with Avent's Care in Cary. Thank you for speaking with us today, Susan. You're welcome. It's great to be here. So let's start simple, although this is, I guess, kind of a complicated question. So can you define autism for us? Yes. Well, um, a simple definition would be that it is a complex developmental condition that can affect how a child behaves or interacts with others. And there is, there is a, it's a spectrum, you know, from the very lowest functioning. I mean, there are some children on the spectrum that can't even speak, right? To, um, to really highly functioning um, children who are, are extremely smart. We used to call that Asperger's, but now we've kind of lumped them together. So Kennedy called autism a preventative, a, pre, a preventable disease. What does the research actually tell us about yeah. that part of it? Yeah, so the research is sh showing that 60 to 90 percent of a children with autism, the risk is rooted in genetics. Genetics. So that's that's hardly preventable. But there are other things that show that um, advanced parental age, and you've probably heard about that. Um, of women that get that decide to have children later, over the age of 35. They have a higher risk for having children with autism. Some of these assisted reproductive technologies, nutritional factors, maternal infections even, and um, so, I mean, certainly environmental chemicals and toxins can play a role. It's always been difficult to look at the trends here, you know, because of the tools we have today. So, so do you believe that more people are being diagnosed because there are more people out there with autism uh, than there were years ago? Or do we have more tools and more awareness? And, and how are, are we even able to figure that out? Yeah, um, I definitely think there is more awareness. In fact, I even have families that call me with, you know, 10 year olds that say, hey, I, I think my child is displaying symptoms of autism. Can they be tested now? But, but, but honestly, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that all children be screened between the ages of 18 months and 24 months. And so um, for autism, we have fantastic tools. We have one called the um, Ages and Stages Developmental Questionnaire, and the other one is the Modified, modified Checklist for Autism in Toddlers. So we use these at both of those really um, important well checkups um, to help us determine whether a child you know, would fall into the, the, you know, has some of the symptoms. The key is early diagnosis and treatment. You have much better outcomes. So I guess the advice is always to check with your doctor if there's a parent out there who has some concerns. Absolutely, absolutely, and get them in and get them the resources they need. You know, we can get kids um, on, uh, you know, speech therapy or physical therapy or occupational therapy, and their um, and their outcomes are so much better than than those kids that are develop that are diagnosed later in life. Susan, thank you so much for your your expertise and input today. You're welcome. It's great to be here.